Hey everyone, Mike Andrade here. It's an honor to be at Comprehensive Care today, and I'm here with our good friend, Dr. Michael Forite. Thanks, Doc, for taking time from your busy schedule. Um, I think it's very important for all of us uh, to be able to have a little bit more education and understand what's going on with the coronavirus. And so um, it's an honor to have Doc here with us today who's gonna speak about the coronavirus and also how we could maintain ourselves uh, with our body from a, a healthy standpoint. Doc, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, listen, I'm an occupational physician. I'm somebody who does injury for a living, okay? And the reason that we're here today, that I'm still open, is because we care for the guys on the front line that are delivering the food to the stores that need to be stocked. We're taking care of the guys who are dropping off gas, the police officers, the firefighters, the EMTs, the ambulance guys. Uh, we have a responsibility for the to the railroad, making sure that things get done. And we have to keep the average working guys that are keeping the country working, yes. working. So we don't treat COVID here. We don't test for it, we don't treat it. I don't want it in my door. And we're taking special precautions so it doesn't come in the door because we have to care for the guys that still have to work. And so we're making sure that we keep ourselves away the, as best we can from the virus and so that we can maintain the the ankle injury or the knee or the fingers that just got taken off or whatever it may be with the, with the working guys that still must be involved in everyday work. And so that's what we do here. But you're here today to help t to hear a little bit about what you can do as an average person in order to, in order to diminish the opportunity to get the COVID. And <clears throat> it hasn't really swept through here at the rate that it's hitting New York City or the East Coast yet. And uh, I would tell you that it's mostly, it's on its way, it's coming, and it's gonna be, it's going to be devastating to those who have allowed themselves mediocrity in life. And it's a shame that when I say that, but uh, the people that haven't asked the most of themselves physically or cared for themselves and have been the ones that have been in and out of hospitals, the ones that are on multiple medicines, the ones that are, that have immunocompromise, I would be sheltered. I wouldn't be going out in public. I wouldn't be having friends over to introduce the bug to the house. I would be keeping myself limited. I have a mother who's a leukemia survivor. For me to see her, I, I shower, I reclothe myself, I go in with mask and gloves just to spend a moment. But it's the, one, it's the type of thing that precautions have to be made now. Yes. Okay. Um, the kind of thing that we can do for ourselves is it's probably the best time for us to really concentrate on taking care of ourselves in a meticulous nature. Um, it's not time for gluttony. I see a lot of posts on, on people sitting around and having uh, expansive meals, cooking, eating. Um, we're sitting around. I mean, what's the most activity that you can imagine doing in a day when you're anchored in your house? That's true. So if people think that having the meals that they normally would is a good idea, well, it's not a good idea. If we're sitting, watching television, catching up on whatever it is you like to watch, Breaking Bad, whatever it may be, you're burning about 50 to 60 calories per hour. And we should know what that looks like. We should be fueling ourselves in a steady state so as to not have an overabundance of fuel which causes an insulin response. And when we have an insulin response, we have a suppression of our immune system each and every time we release insulin. And so whenever we give ourselves these enormous amounts of energy that the body doesn't require, the body counteracts it. The body, the body counteracts it with the release of insulin. And, and for those moments that we have all this excess, we fuel processes of inflammation and infection. They're instantly fueled by our bodies having a multiplier of fuel that it didn't require. So for me, I'm trying to be meticulous. I'm trying to have small portion throughout the day. I'm avoiding sugars at all costs because they are instant bursts of energy that the body absolutely does not require. And um, I'm one that likes to have a steady state 
uh, fueling throughout my day without gluttony. Sure. And now's the time not to, not to have the gluttony. Um, there's a lot of talk on, on what are we going to do, what's the medicine, when's the vaccine going to be available. It's, gonna, it's not going to happen anytime soon. The first thing that they're trying to do is contain this virus, which they're not doing a great job of with people still having uh, some of the social activities that they shouldn't be doing. You and I have a distance between us that keeps us from me spreading some of what I may have to you. And that's a pretty safe distance, okay? But I would tell you that the folks that aren't bothering doing that, they may not think of it amongst their young selves who are healthy, but if they go and they stop and see grandma and they didn't realize that somebody they'd just been with who had looked appeared healthy, didn't have any signs or symptoms, may have just contributed to an outcome for grandma that won't be so good because grandma isn't quite as healthy, okay? So we have to make sure that we are helping our senior citizens who are probably more vulnerable than us. Well, in Italy, uh, they've decided to not do anything for anybody that's 60 or above. 60 or above. And that's not far from me. I'm in my mid-50s, and I don't want to think that I'm almost near the written-off age, okay? But so what do you do for those folks? What do, you, what do you do for the people that... You try to encourage them to be as healthy as they can. If they're, if they're diabetic, it's time to be, really pay close attention to, to making sure your sugars are as controlled as possible. You d it's not the time for just willy-nilly fueling and just having whatever you desire. It's time for necessity, okay? You're not going to have, we're already having runs at the stores on everything that is uh, what people desire continuously. Our baseline fueling, if we're sitting at home, is somewhere around 50 to 60 calories an hour for us to sit and do this. And that's what we're doing at home, right? You're sitting laying back, that doesn't take energy that it would require to run a, uh, to jog. There's no reason to put in a large amount or a large bolus of fuel into you if you're going to be doing this hour one, hour two, hour three, hour five, hour eight. If your day is going to be sort of steady, consider giving yourself some steady fueling, okay? It'll benefit your immune system. Um, it's one of the things that I've that I teach here in order to maintain a low inflammatory and a low infectious outcome for patients. And it's one of the things that's typically not done at centers. And it's real easy to do while I'm sitting and talking to somebody and you let, you let them know that the choices that they make truly can affect the outcome of whatever, whatever they're fighting, whether it be injury or illness. And uh, I'm a second generation DO, osteopathic physician, and my Father was 50 years a DO in Hammond. He was the first uh, DO with the Franciscans. And my brother Claude is now president of the Employed Network of the Franciscans. And my brother David's also a, a practicing DO. And we've got a few years of experience. And I can tell you the kind of things that I've watched and experienced with my own eyes and hands and how they've changed outcomes for people. And so the number one thing that most of us can do is make sure that we eat correctly. Make sure that we get rest, okay? Make sure that we're not putting additional stressors on the body. And that's not hard to do, okay? It's, it's not time to party. It's not time to show that, that you have three cases of wine for yourself over the next two weeks. And it's the wrong time. If people think this is time for just celebration or, or gluttony, they're not going to do so well. It's time for meticulous. That's a good point, Doc. So if you notice that on Facebook, if you're on social media, a lot of people posting, well, I am making this type of drink and I am drinking wine and making cookies and, you know, we are baking pizza and baking cakes. So number one is eat healthy. Eat, eat, healthy. Healthy. eat healthy. I mean, I don't mind if you've got grandma's recipe for that for that Italian soup and it's delicious, but it doesn't mean that you have to have the entire bowl of it. It's the kind of things that we require are steady but frequent fuelings, okay? And that's the best thing for our immune response, is to not tax it. And so by us fueling ourselves with the same efficiencies that you would fuel, say, your car, 
Okay, you don't just flood the car at a, at, and just expect it to work itself out. You put in the correct fuel that it calls for, you stop when it's full, you have perfect pedal pressure and you monitor it. So our bodies actually do very well when we do the same thing for our bodies, okay? I'm a fan of not only being meticulous with our fueling, but I'm also a fan of using some vitamin C. And I'm a, uh, a fan of Linus Pauling and his work that he did. And uh, he was a big vitamin C doser. And uh, he talked in his day about using, on an average day, he would use anywhere from eight to 10,000 milligrams orally of vitamin C just to keep himself in a fighting mode, just in case. When he was under stress, he would use somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 milligrams per waking hour, which would then boost him even further to help destroy a virus or help fend off a virus. So I've got, and I'm not talking about orange juice, Michael, okay, because people say, oh, I have that orange juice. Well, the 100 milligrams that's recommended in your daily dose of orange juice by the, by the FDA is one-tenth of one tablet and it's got sugar in it. And the sugar is going to cause an insulin response, which is going to suppress your immune system. Wow. So people that drink orange juice, thinking that they're doing themselves a favor with a cold or a bug or a flu, that's caca, okay? They're getting a fraction of what they should be using. And um, I'm glad you brought that up, doctor, because if you notice, a lot of people are saying, well, go buy toilet paper, go buy toilet paper. How about taking some going to a store, getting some vitamins off the shelf Yes. to stay healthy with your immune system. And you can get vitamin C in vegetable, okay? You can get it in your green vegetables and your broccolis and your carrots. And there's all kinds of things that's available in. But I'm also at this time, I'm at a time for supplementation, okay? okay? Now, I may be talking because I'm in a, in a, I'm on the front line here and I get people Sorry. walking in that are, that are, that may be sick and ill and I've got to keep myself tip top. But I would tell you that I would keep everybody a little bit higher than average, okay? I, the, the meds that are being recommended, the antimalarials that are being tested, don't have a demonstrated absolute effectiveness against this. They, they're still watching clinical studies. They're not coming out and saying, hey, this absolutely is crushing the corona, because it's not. And People by choice, when they have to take an anti-malarial, they have to think about it for a moment because it makes, usually makes them a little ill in taking the medicine itself. It's an immunosuppressive in itself. So people that are running out to go and get this anti-malarial medicine, I'd be a little cautionary. Okay. I would, take, I would prepare myself by keeping myself in the best immune health that I can in order to fend off the problem instead of waiting for it to get me and then use the big hammer that they have that they hope can crush it okay so it's about preparing ourselves for what's coming not just waiting and saying once I get it I have a tablet to take it's about living better resting getting a little daily exercise maybe a little love making I don't it's always good for the for the entirety of the whole human and Eating properly, properly, eating properly, which means no meals. It means just steadily. If we're sitting at home and we're quarantined, what's the chance you're going to get out and run a marathon, right? So why would you need the amount of fuel that you can go outside and run for two hours in a, in a meal? Because you don't. You're going to find yourself heavier at the end of this and possibly with the immune suppression and maybe having dealt with the corona itself. So I'd rather be meticulous. I'd rather be finding out what is my necessity per hour. And most people don't know what their necessities are. They just know what their desires are. Sure. In this country, we, we can have a different desire daily. If you wanted to go for your favorite Mexican, I can go over here to Hammond and I can have a, a meal that's just put in front of me that should be in the center of a family's table. And I can go to Italy the next night and do a complete tour with endless breadsticks. And I can have China come to the home in the next day. So those are the kind of things that human beings were never used to. But those are the type of things that allow us to overfuel and suppress our immune drive. So I'm a fan of keeping our immune drive as tip-top as I possibly can. 
Okay. So we have to keep our immune system. Keep the immune system, system up. 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 Take your vitamin C's. Take your vitamin I'm in, see, I'm taking 10, 12,000 milligrams a day, easily. Now, everybody doesn't have to have that, but sure. if you're somewhere between three and 5,000, you can get it in tablets, you can get it in chewable forms. I don't want it in juice form. I don't want the sugar added. It doesn't need to be. Um, I have a powdered formulation that each teaspoon is 5,000 milligrams. 5,000 milligrams, if I'm getting 100 migs per orange, that's like, that's like 50 oranges I'm eating without the sugar but I'm getting the benefit of the vitamin C. And the critics of vitamin C who speak to, oh, your body's gonna excrete it, your body's just gonna eliminate it. I ask them, does the fact that they have bowel movements stop them from eating? And the answer is, well, no, but your body's gonna make use of the nutrient while you have it in you, even though you excrete it. Yeah. So I don't care if I'm excreting some excess vitamin C, I'm gonna keep it tip top for me while I'm using it. It's gonna help keep me pumped up. And so those are some of the simple things that I do. I get a little exercise every day. Um, I avoid, uh, I wash, I clean my hands here where I'm always washing my hands. But it's avoidance of people that are ill. I have signs on my front door that say, don't even think about coming in if you're sick. I have to be here for people that have to be available to the public yes. and so we have to keep ourselves healthy here it's a must okay I don't want the COVID coming in I'm gonna do my best to keep it from coming in my home okay and if I keep it from coming in my home I'll be able to treat people and be safe about it that's great so folks you heard it maintain your body how do we stay healthy is eating appropriately number one number two Vitamin C, vitamin C. Vitamin C, but listen, avoiding of sugars is really maximally important. Uh, as, a, as a Polish kid, uh, if I was walking in, in Poland today and I went looking for a natural occurring sugar, I better have a tent with me because uh, the, the berries that I'd have for one to two weeks won't be available until mid-July. Okay, and that's naturally occurring. Okay. Now that you can fly in a pineapple from Hawaii, but a bird would have been 10,000 miles off track in order to drop that on my skull. It, no way would I have ever seen that. I wouldn't have seen a banana or an orange where I came from. So why all of a sudden are those things good for me? But the vitamin is good. Vitamins. Any last words for our audience? Maybe something about, you know, we've been hearing about washing your hands and making sure that you are protecting yourself with gloves and a mask, you know, uh, make sure you're using your hand sanitizer if you're out in the public. Distancing is nice. And, and please, it's not a joke. And there have been, I've heard, you know, people making, just making fun of this by coughing in people's direction and, and fake sneezing and doing things. I think that's awful. I think that uh, you're going to be, you're going to be cautioned about it possibly being assault if you were to imp if you were to intentionally direct a cough at somebody during a time when that cough could cost you your life. So I think it's not fun in games. It's time for us to be serious. It's, it's, in my lifetime, I've never experienced anything like this. I don't think any of us have gone through anything like this. I think most of us will make it and most of us will survive. I think the ones that take better care of themselves and absolutely treat this as if it's a moment where they should ask the most of themselves and not the least of themselves, they'll be the ones who get through it the easiest. I think the ones that haven't asked of themselves and are using this as just a time to party and, and, and indulge and, and enjoy gluttony, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna pay a price. Sure. And I don't wish it on anybody. Okay, that's not my intent, but I just can tell you that seeing what I see in terms of the injury care that I do and watching how the body reacts when it's which even slightly mistreated, it doesn't perform at its best. And they're not, despite what channel I watch on TV, they're talking about the lack of, uh, the lack of control or lack of containment, the lack of testing, the lack of a virus. These things are going to be the commonalities for some time. So. Where is anybody talking about what we can do for ourselves? Yes. And that's what, that's what they're missing. We need somebody to say, you can optimize your chances by, by taking a little better care of yourself. 
Don't bake those pies at this time, okay? Take it easy. Have smaller, nutritious things. Stay away from your sugars and your carbs. Don't have anything that's more than you truly need, okay? Little things steadily all day because that's what you're burning. Um, in, our, in our next talk, we'll talk about um, some of the, uh, the newest symbolism that they're using for caloric display. And um, in the United States, you get a back of a package and it may say, uh, that Snickers bar may say 230 cals, but that 230 cals, if you're sitting at your house and you're burning 50 an hour watching Breaking Bad, that's four hours plus of energy. Do you think your body has a way of spreading it out over four hours? No. no. So it just knows that you threw in a stick that's worth four hours, but you just indulged in it in one. And you get this quick spike in energy that causes you to have an insulin release, suppressing your defenses. Wow. And so it's all about keeping ourselves as meticulous as we can. When we were born, and we're going to get into a diabetic talk too, but when we were born, nobody had to teach us to push away from our mothers. Okay? We didn't, we didn't ask for extra breast on holidays. It wasn't something that we knew a 4th of July should have been a special occasion where I can have, a, I'm going to my brother-in-law's in the morning and my friends now and at each time I'm overindulging and then 24 to 36 hours later I'm praying to Jesus to have a bowel movement as I'm holding onto the the wall of the bathroom, okay? <laughs> and these are what they teach us to do. Sure. But what it does to our bodies is it absolutely destroys the systems that try to maintain control for us. And so I see it all the time. And I'm just a second gen guy seeing it. And, and um, it hasn't changed. Wow. And it's Thanks not gonna that. change quickly. I think we can do more for ourselves, Yes. okay? And I think by just getting this word out, is going to be beneficial and helpful. I think well, so. Thank you so much. So you heard it firsthand from Dr. Michael Foray. Please eat proportionally. Um, let's maintain our health, maintain our bodies. Vitamin C, vitamin C, vitamin C. And uh, we're going to have another follow-up video that we're going to talk about diabetes. And okay. I think it's very important for us to understand that and the uh, damage that it causes in our body and also generational stuff yes. with diabetes. No doubt about it. So. Thank you so much, Dr. Michael Fora, Mike Andrade here, and hopefully this was very good information that will help somebody today. I want to thank him for coming in because not too many people are coming in asking what it is that we can do for the common person. Yes. And we're hearing more about what's not being done for us by our federal government, but you're asking what can we do for each other. Yes, sir. And so I appreciate that about your approach. Thanks, Doc. Okay, I really do. Thank you everybody for watching us today.